Hey friends, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with another day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ and we do it one bite at a time. So after a crazy astronomy lesson yesterday, but showing how God works with individuals, let me pull this thing back up right here again. This idea of Kolob being the star nearest to God, who is Jesus Christ, which then governs 15 great ones who then give their light to all of these cocoa beam who are you and I, right? When you simplify it that way, way, Abraham chapter 3 is not such a difficult chapter to study. Well, the question is this, what happens when we get off orbit from Kolob? So orbit is an interesting thing. So it's the path of a celestial body or an artificial satellite as it revolves around another body. So meaning we try to hide to Kolob, we try to stay close to Jesus Christ through those 15 prophets and apostles. So what happens when you get off base? Well, let me show you what I've heard referred to as Colobian time, all right? And many of you know this, but we talk about it often, but we don't always know the roots of it. Abraham chapter three, verse number four, and it says, and the Lord said unto me by the Urim and Thummim that Kolob was after the manner of the Lord according to its times and seasons in the revolutions thereof. Again, that orbit that we're talking about, that one revolution was a day unto the Lord after his manner of reckoning, it being 1,000 years according to the time appointed unto that whereon thou standest. This is the reckoning of the Lord's time according to the reckoning of Kolob. Again, what is time to a God? That's where you hear the phrase that a thousand years to us is like a day to God. So I started messing with that a little bit. And so let me show you uh, some math. Sorry to bring math into a sacred environment here. But you got the Colobian time chart here, okay? <laughs> Take this for what it's worth, by the way. Uh, one day is equal to a thousand years, which we figured, which means one hour is equal to 41.67 years in earth time. One minute to God is like 8.4 months. One second is four days, five hours, and 20 minutes. A quarter second to God is a day to us, and one one hundredth of a second is like one hour. And you're probably like, great, this is awesome. Let me just mess with this for a second, okay? If you are, say, 15 years old, and again, I, I work with teenagers usually, but again, you can figure this out, whatever your age is. You figure out your age times 12 months, and you figure out the number of months. You divide that by the 8.4, which I showed you before. So teenagers have been on the earth for about 20 minutes, okay? 21.4 minutes. So in a teenager's world especially, and you can show this to your teenagers if you've got them, uh, the homecoming dance is about a quarter second. Uh, the school year is one minute and four seconds. The entire experience of high school is five minutes and six seconds, according to God. Uh, being in the MTC as a missionary, 6.5 seconds. A mission for a young man, three minutes and 18 seconds. College College, you figure six minutes and 36 seconds. Raising children, you parents out there raising children, about 36 minutes. You know, about a half an hour, give or take. Your life expectancy, life expectancy right now is give, right, give or take 75 years, which is one hour and 48 minutes. Okay. Now, we are noble and great ones. If you were to go to Abraham chapter 3, verses 22 to 25, Now the Lord had shown unto me, Abraham, the intelligence that were organized before the world was. And among all these were many of the noble and great ones. God saw these souls that they were good. And he stood in the midst of them and said, These I will make my rulers, for he stood among those that are spirits. He saw that they were good. And he said unto me, Abraham, thou art one of them. Thou was chosen before thou was born. Uh, it talks about how you go down to 25, we will prove them, meaning you and I, prove them herewith to see if they will do all things whatsoever the Lord their God shall command them. So can you and I, these noble and great little cocoa beams that we talked about, can we be good for an hour and 48 minutes? That's like, you know, if you've ever done this with your kids, like guys, we're going to be gone for two hours. Make sure you don't ruin the place, right? And that's kind of what happens here. The Lord's going to send us down to earth for a couple hours and say, can you guys be good, right? Well, here's the problem. It is easy to get off orbit from Kolob. Let me show you an example of one of the ways I did. Um, so I live in Clinton, Utah. Okay, Clinton, Utah is kind of the northern Davis County area. It's in the northern Wasatch Front area. A few years ago, I was going up to teach a, an EFY up in Rexburg, Idaho. So Clinton to Rexburg is about 212 miles. And I had never been to Rexburg before that. There's some, you know, BYU, Idaho is where I was heading up to. So I'd never been there before, 212 miles. Well, 
here's the road and you can kind of see you know you head up there you're going on i-15 but i actually took a detour and went i-84 this is pre like siri days and pre you know all of the map all you know i think i printed out a map at that point and i was just it was my wife and i that were going and i just i got off course man and i started heading this direction and i kept going and going i'm going through all of these metropolises in idaho and honestly i ended up over in mountain home idaho and i started seeing signs uh heading to boise and i'm just like okay i don't know my idaho geography as well as i should but I think I am off course in a big way. So I stopped in Mountain Home, Idaho, and I stopped at a gas station there, and I said, um, I think I'm lost. And the guy said, where are you headed? And I said, Rexburg. And he just laughed. He's like, that's funny. Where are you coming from? And I said, Clinton, Utah. And he's like, son, you are off base. So he showed me. You go back this way. He said, you're going to take right over here. You're going to click onto that 30, head over to Pocatello, head up through Idaho Falls, and you're going to end up in Rexburg. Okay. So my 212-mile journey that I was supposed to take ended up being 387 miles. Okay. Now, I learned some lessons, and I think there's some things that you and I can learn when we get off orbit from Kolob. So things I learned. Number one. I had a feeling I was off, but I ignored it. Part of that's called being a guy, right? And uh, my wife was asking me, she's like, do you know where you're going? I'm like, oh yeah, of course I do. However, I had a feeling I was off, but I ignored it. Number two lesson, I needed help. Asking for help can be very difficult at times. Like I said, especially for a guy who wants to think he knows what he's doing. So number three, I missed out on some things. Again, there was some, just some road there, but I missed out on the original destination that I was supposed to go on. And number four, staying on the right road gets me where I need to go, and it saves me time, it saves me pain, and it saves me gas money as well. That was a little bit more of a, a gas money trip than I thought I would take. And number five, this is important, I still got to where I needed to be, and I experienced what I needed to experience even though I was late. I was just late that night. I didn't teach until the next day so we were just a few we were a few hours late but we still got there we still got to what we needed to do so we got in off orbit but we got ourselves back to where we needed to be now with that in mind i saw a cool little quote from Dieter f uchtdorf years ago and many of you are familiar with this uh, he gave a talk called the point of safe return wherever you find yourselves on this journey through life whatever trials you may face there is always a point of safe return there is always hope you are the captain of your life, and God has prepared a plan to bring you safely back to him, to your divine destination. The gift of the atonement of Jesus Christ provides us at all times and in all places with the blessings of repentance and forgiveness. So because of this gift, the opportunity to make safe return from a disastrous course of sin is available to all of us. So when we get off base from Kolob and we find ourselves falling away, there is a point of safe return where we can come back. So putting Abraham 3 back together in all of this. So Kolob is nearest to God's throne, as that is true. Jesus Christ is also nearest to his father. Near the son are the noble and great ones, the prophets and leaders who are governed by Jesus Christ and receive his light. The Savior and the prophets are set to govern and rule because of their great intelligence and their great light. The wisest thing we can do as God's noble and great stars is to recognize the intelligence of these 15 great ones and then allow ourselves to be governed by them by receiving and reflecting their light and knowledge to stay on orbit with them. And so I, I love Abraham chapter 3. I love the, the astronomy. And again, I'm not an astronomer by any stretch of the imagination, but I love how it focuses on individuals. And so as we stay close to Jesus Christ and the prophets and apostles, we will not get off base. I know that's true. Hey, thanks for a great week of studying this week. I love the Old Testament and I'm excited to continue to share it with you. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thank you so much for sharing these messages and go check out our amazing gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. You guys have a great week. Godspeed. See ya. Bye-bye.